I put no vapes up. No douche flutes. No weed pipes. Can't smoke your weebs in here. Why, did who told you you could sit down? <laughs> Look at that. You got a dirty oil sample and everything. Most of the time I don't pre-fill fuel filters. We're professional, it's not backyard. Backyard again. <laughs> I know, you're just so, he's so quick and efficient. Like number one apprentice, man. Today, Junior. Yeah, so we've been here all night trying to figure out why it won't start. And we just found that one of the, the terminals is corroded. Look at that, check out my meter. How many volts is that? So between the battery negative on one side and the positive on the other should have 25 volts. And we got one. Wow. We got. Un, un volt. So that, our voltage drop test confirms that there's no <laughs> voltage. Clean that up. Uh, rip the batteries right out. They're junk. The batteries are f***ed. The batteries are no good. NFG, not for garbage, because there's core on them. Hey man, when in doubt, whatever. Parts till she starts. In this case, batteries. Yeah, I just throw batteries at machines. Why not? They're cheap. No, they're dead. They're like dead, dead. There's no bringing those things back. We're ripping the batteries out and we're replacing them. Don't look at the camera, look at the batteries. Put your glasses on. <laughs> Lead by example. Put my glasses on Tighten for you. Why did who told you you could sit down? Myself. Are those batteries out? Yeah. Look at that. Pan over to that. Look at those batteries. When I see the batteries that dead, it's a waste of time. I'm gonna throw new batteries in it. Why well, spend that hour or so setting up, charging the batteries and whatnot, you know, waiting there and it still doesn't start. Yeah, I could take our terminals off and clean everything up and then retry it again. Like how, how far do you want to go doing the same thing to see if yeah. m maybe it'll start and maybe we'll see these batteries, which we're probably going to replace anyways, right? Once they get that low, they're done. Just replace them. Now this switch will probably work. Oh, somebody put a little immobilizer switch in there. So I've come across that before with other machines that are no starts and whatnot. And even the operator running it for that company, they didn't know that there was a immobilizer switch that someone just wired in to cut the ignition. Make sure there's no immobilizer switches. Oh, you guys are still shooting this, eh? I heard you guys wanted more filter changes. I'm gonna show you how it's actually done. As far as air filters go, Everyone's got their own opinions on when they should get changed and all that, but it's all wrong. I go by whatever the OEM recommends, really. If they're telling you to do it every 500 for your primary or, or to go by the restriction gauge, then you do that. Technically, most of what you see in OEM literature says to change your primary air filter when your restriction light comes on. I'm not going to argue that because technically you're getting the most filtration when that filter is beginning to actually plug up and become too restricted, right? That doesn't mean it's 100% restricted, but that restriction gauge measures how much airflow is coming through. And then there's a, you know, a minimum threshold there. The light comes on, but it's still able to, to breathe. Then you change your filter, right? Makes sense. Don't overchange your air filters. You can dust your engine. That's a real thing. I don't care what you say in the comments, just swapping those in and out. If you're in a really dusty environment and you're swapping your air filters a lot, especially the inner, it can actually lead to dusting. Uh, because every time you pull that element out, if you're pulling your inner out every time too, and you're not cleaning your housing out, or you're just not being careful with it, you get a little bit of dust every time. It accumulates up and over time, you might've lost a thousand hours on the life of that engine, whatever. You can dust your engine over changing filters. Look at this guy. Did you get a sample? Look at that. You got a dirty oil sample and everything. You can tell a lot about a guy by how his samples come back. We'll throw the air filter back, the cover back on. I'm not gonna pull the filter. I'm not gonna blow it out. I don't believe in blowing out filters. No, you don't blow them out. I don't care what you say. You can go ahead and argue that with me in the comments all day long. I love the controversy, by the way. No, I don't believe in, I don't believe in blowing out filters. We'll get a new filter and throw it in when we, on the next interval possibly. Cause really that, that filter realistically, it's clean on the inside, right? So why would I pull it and risk contamination on the inside of that filter just for whatever and giggles just to knock it out and and blow it out leave it get a new filter uh when the time comes pull it out clean your housing slap a new filter in that'll last 
more than enough time until their next oil change. This is how I do a filter change. This is how I do services. This guy can actually do his whole, this whole ser service by, by himself. Credit to his instructor. We'll check our drives. So even though this is just a 500, it doesn't call for these to get replaced, the, the uh, drive oil, but we'll check it. What have we talked about before? We talked about the final drives. They never get checked. They get overlooked. These get overlooked. The guy didn't check it on the last service or maybe it was due at the last service. Let's say it was due every thousand hours and it wasn't, it was skipped last service, right? So now when it's, when's it gonna get done again? Another thousand hours? So now it's a thousand hours overdue. So it's got 2000 hours on that. And in between in all those services, no one ever checked it. Hypothetically, let's say that back seal was leaking. 2000 hours is a long time. So it's really easy for this stuff to get overlooked on your services. You don't do it one time. Well, when's the next time it's gonna get checked at your next service, which is 500 hours from now or a thousand hours from now. So you can see how, how easy it is for, you miss one check, it's way overdue. Like when I do these with Carson, I always go through this stuff with him and make sure he knows we're checking all our levels. I don't care if it's a 250 or a 500, we're checking finals, we're checking axle, we're checking swing, we're checking all that stuff on those services, right? That's part of the PM, right? That's why it doesn't take it. It's not a 10 minute oil change like when you take your car in, right? You know, we're not doing that. These things, they're working hard and they're making money. So we're ensuring that they're not gonna be down. We're the best. What I'm trying to say is, ain't nobody better. I'm just kidding. Look at that. Look at all that Watto. Look at that. Knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, I'll put gloves on. Don't worry. Then I'll be double bagged because I'm wearing PR88. It's kind of hard to see. It's hard to have two mechanics working in here at once, man. You could always just quit. Just do it on your own. You don't need me anymore, apparently. I gotta grab it off the ground. Apparently he doesn't pick up after me anymore, so. <laughs> you want dad, you want dad to show you how to do no, it? it's on. Okay. Did it's you wipe started. the base before you stuck that on? No. Why the f not? You want me to? How many times I say wipe the base? Make sure I've like, actually never heard you say that once. I'm pretty sure I always say wipe the base. <sighs> That's okay. You want me to or no? Uh, just it's too late now. No, as long as there's no extra gasket on there and there's no schmoo. Oh, I, no, there wasn't. No, I usually like to wipe the base. Like, see this one? Yeah. All that schmeg? Yeah. I wipe the base. Why didn't you pre-fill that oil filter? <laughs> Anyways, you don't... People actually do that? Yeah, you do. Some people do. I don't. I don't believe in it. Another controversial cam never moment. Never pre-fill any filters. Never pre-fill oil filters. Most of the time, I don't pre-fill fuel filters. We're professionals, not backyardigans. Backyardigans. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't pre-fill... Uh, filters. I don't believe in it because it's dirty and I'm not a dirty guy. Take the lid off and remember I showed you before the, oh, bottom, the, of the, the bottom of the, not the moisture, but just every pail of oil I've ever had. When you take off the lid at the very bottom, you'll see like trace amounts of dirt and whatever. Anyway, so another controversial cam moment. I don't pre-fill my oil filters or my fuel filters. Usually not my fuel filters. Uh, very rarely. I may pre-fill a fuel filter, but I always plug the center port. We actually did one the other day. Yeah, we had to, because that thing was a... Anyways, don't matter, the prime pump was done on it and it had three fuel filters on it, so we just primed them up to save us sitting there forever and putting air on the tank and causing all kinds. Anyways, besides the point, 99% of the time, I don't pre-fill uh, any filter. Oil, fuel, hydraulic, whatever you want to say. And reason being, that's dirty oil you're putting into that filter. If you put it through the center, the filter filters on the outside through to the center. Well, any of that oil that went into the center of the filter is not filtered now. It's going straight into your engine, unfiltered. I guess technically if you wanted to, you could filter it from the outside in if you want to wait for it to all flow through the outside of the filter then in the center. That's what I was saying. I do that with fuel when I occasionally, very rarely fill a fuel filter. I plug the center port, fill from the outside in, right? And let her buck until the inside's full then I know that inside fuel is filtered. I'd rather have it dry when I stick it on though, just because, you know, I'll lube the outside of the filter, put it on dry and let the machine prime it up, right? Cause that's a closed system now. I know I'm getting clean fuel from my tank pickup. I'm, well, I mean, it's not clean fuel, but into just the outside, the way it's supposed to run through the system into the next filter, into the next filter, and then into the engine. So it's getting fully filtered before it hits the engine. Same with the oil filter. We got engine oil going into the base of the engine, picked up through your oil pump, 
you can kind of argue all the, you, you can split hairs and say, well, that's dirty oil going in your engine, whatever. I don't believe in filling it. It's an unnecessary step. If, you, if you're making the argument that your engine's not getting, uh, not getting engine oil all the way, like right away, because your filter's dry, well, that's not true either. Uh, the lube circuit in your engine is a separate circuit than the filtration circuit. So as soon as you start your engine, it's not, your engine's not running dry until your filter fills with oil. That's not happening, right? Your oil pump goes up and sends oil to all these parts of the engine and then to the lube circuit. It's not running dry when your filter's empty. It's not, don't be freaking out thinking that we're running an engine dry for 10 minutes until that oil is totally full in the filter. So what kind of, you got, you got any questions about doing filters and stuff? What do you want to know? Just in case you haven't seen, we have a couple of videos on filter changes on the channel you can check out. Yeah, choose who do you want to see do filters? Me, the other guy, uh, that other dude, um, guy number one, guy number two. Pick your mechanic. <laughs> choose your own adventure, homie. No oil ring in here? Oh, there is one in there. I'll change it. I'll change it for you guys. I mean, this oil ring probably got changed 200 hours ago, so. But we'll change it again for Felicity's sake, or simplicity's sake, whoever. We're almost done. Yeah, we are almost done. None of this six hour service bullshit. One hour service, 100 hours. Don't tell people how long it takes us. They don't expect a discount because it doesn't take as long. Jeez, jeez. Wow, you're actually really fast at that. Do I need to pay the full amount? Why would I give you a discount? Because I'm good at my job. Spent a lot of time doing this. Getting good at it, so why does that? Why does that give you a discount, huh? We knocked this service out pretty quick. That's how we do it. Get you back running the right way. But we're gonna finish up just uh, checking the finals, checking the rest of the fluids. That's easy stuff. You guys don't need to see that. No, for sakes, you're turning the truck off until we're done. <laughs> Jeez, the worst timing. This kid. All. I'm just kidding. Just trying to get my job done. I know, you're just so, he's so quick and efficient. Like number one apprentice, man. Uh, you, now I lost my th thought, thought train. Uh, it's gone. Bye for now. Okay, fire it up, let's go. Huh? I already kissed it. You want another one? Okay, let's go. Fire the truck up. <laughs>